Hello, I'm Dave Callum, and I'm doing a show at the Rhino Room called The Psychology of Laughter, and it runs from the 23rd of February until the 3rd of March, except Sunday and Monday. But if you come on those days, you can see burlesque ladies dancing about in feathers and decor, so not me. While I was in Edinburgh last year, I found a book, and it was called The Psychology of Laughter, and it was written in 1913 almost a hundred years ago, so I decided to read it and it was a bit of a gold mine. So I made a show out of the book and I also added a bit of information about what life was like when the book was written a hundred years ago and how life has changed in between then and now. Um, the book, I have to admit, was uh, quite racist and sexist, um, or as they called it back then, normal. So uh, be, be aware of that. Um, and it, it's quite unlike anything I've ever done before, and it's probably unlike anything that has been performed in the fringe. It's quite a, it's quite a one-off. If you like psychology, if you like laughing, and if you like uh, how weird life has become in the last hundred years, and how weird we are as humans, then I think you'll like the show. Yeah, it's kind of evolved over time. Like um, seven years ago, I started this style, or maybe six years ago. Um, with a show called Dance of the Flame Retardant Monkey. And I was influenced by Muse, the band Muse at the time, and they had all these big projections. And I wanted to have big projections. So I had two projectors and two big screens. And I was like bombarding people with images and doing comedy in between. And it was too much. People want to, if they're watching a rock band, then that's good. That helps and, you know, it, it builds the atmosphere. But, um, how many people want to focus a bit more. So I've just got one screen now, but that experience of having lots of projected images uh, was really experimental and it helped me kind of focus a style. And now I can more naturally do comedy and have the, the screens augment that style a bit easier. Well, with the book, deriving the humor and the important content out of it was a bit of an effort. I read the book twice and um, put post-it notes in the first time, drawing my attention to important parts. And then I kind of whittled them down until I got to the core. Stuff that's either funny because it's funny, or funny because it's so dated, or funny because it's sexist or racist or bigoted. Um, he makes fun of stammering people, he makes fun of fat people. <laughs> Lots of Irish jokes. So condensing all that and going, hey, uh, here's the content that I've sieved. Like, a, like an old prospector out of, out of a stream to get nuggets of gold. That's basically what the experience was like. Well, um, I've been part of the Fringe for about maybe seven or eight years. And the first time I, I did it, I was on the balcony of an Irish pub called PJ O'Brien's, which seemed suitable for me because I'm Irish. And I went, yeah, I'll do that. And uh, all you could hear was uh, people screaming and urinating on taxis because there was no, you know, no soundproofing. It was just a balcony, and I thought the thing was going to collapse. Uh, luckily, I didn't sell very well back then, so there weren't too many people to shake the foundations. Then um, the friends decided that I would be best off going to a abandoned pie factory on the other side of town to do a show, and so that was different. Uh, I felt like at any moment a group of kids from the 70s with a Great Dane were going to come in and unmask me. And go, oh my god, it was old man Callum at the abandoned Balfour's place. The Rhino Room is an amazing room for comedy and uh, it's just like four weeks straight of comedy on two floors. Shows starting every hour. Lots of people that come from all over the world to perform here and in the other venues around town in the garden. And um, Adelaide really salutes it. Adelaide really comes out and goes, yeah, you're coming here, you're all putting this stuff on for us, and by God, are we gonna you know, come out and, and be the best audiences we can be, um, and get behind it and support it so that it keeps happening, and we keep coming back because we love it. Yeah, look, um, working in that pie factory was a bad memory <laughs> because there was no air conditioning. Well, there was one air conditioner, but it was noisy and ancient and ineffective and it just was more of a problem than a solution. Um, that was horrible, the, the factory would get really hot and people would be baking in there. People wouldn't be laughing. Um, that was an awkward season, that was a bad memory. And you know, 
clips of people fighting in the garden, I don't like that much. And the good memories are just hanging out with uh, Craig Egan, the guy who runs the Rhino Room, and dancing and having him on my shoulders playing guitar hero. <laughs> um, that was a lovely memory, that was good fun, that was epic. Hello, Dave Callan at the Rhino Room. It's called The Psychology of Laughter and it's uh, at 9.45 in between the 23rd and the, of February uh, 2012 and the 3rd of March. No Sundays or Mondays. Um, it's about a book I found in Edinburgh called The Psychology of Laughter. I picked it up and I opened it up and it was written in 1913. Well, published in 13, so it would have been written in 1912, so 100 years old. So the show is about how life has changed radically since the time of the book and now. It was a completely different world. So I'm going to be exploring that and uh, also explaining to people why they laugh. Um, and uh, the psychology behind it, and also reading excerpts from the book, which in fact is partially quite sexist and racist, or as it was called back then, normal. So if you, if you feel like coming along and having a laugh and learning a bit about psychology and history, then it's the show for you. It's uh, again 9.45 at the Rhino. Well, the first two weeks of Fringe 2012.